I'm here with Mo Saha, who has what I think is such a great tip for how to make a flat image look dimensional. And the key, I think, is light. Yes. Okay. Understanding how light interacts with objects can help you turn a flat object into three-dimensional. Let me show you how. Look over here. You add a flat color wash and you have a circle. You add a light source and now you have a light and a dark side. You add more washes of the same color following the contours and now you have a sphere. It is amazing how just that simple adding that there makes that suddenly look dimensional. Yes, and now that it's a sphere, it's a solid object and the light falls on it, it casts shadows. So you add another color wash and you add a darker side and your object is now grounded to the background. That's fantastic, and you make it seem so easy. It is easy if you understand it. For example, here in this one, I have the light coming in from the top left, and in this example, I have light coming in from this side. So we so, hold those two together so that we can see them absolutely. together, and you can see what a difference it makes whether you have the light coming from the left or the right. So the idea is, no matter where your light is coming from, you are keeping it consistent throughout the pro process. Okay. All right, let's get so. started. Now we're using watercolors, and a yes. lot of people might be confused because they're used to watercolors coming sort of in a pan set. Yes. And these are two watercolors, so even though they look like maybe an acrylic paint or something, they're still watercolors, and you can put them in like this is a reusable palette, and you just sort of ink them up. Now you've mixed some colors together, which I think is cool. Yes, because in nature, nothing is really one solid color and there are no absolute blacks. So you, whatever you need to make dark, you just add more washes of the same color. Now I have to tell you, you're using a really big brush and you're not That's staying in right. the lines and no, you're I going over things and it's making me nervous. That's okay, because see, when there are two objects next to each other, the light reflects and the reflections, the colors, they mingle. So it's okay that your yellow is going into the blue or your green is going into your brown. That's totally fine. And that you're just painting over the rocks, the planner, yes, the lines, yes. it's all getting it at the same time. It's yep. kind of, I feel, I feel like we're brave explorers now doing yes, this. Yes, we are. Yeah, oh my gosh. There are no you're right really wrong. just going for it. Now, because here's the see, question I have, which is the paper you're working on. Is this not coloring book paper? This is a thick cardstock. This was a printable coloring page, so okay. I printed it on a thick cardstock. You can also print it on lightweight watercolor paper. Something that will hold up to all the water that That's we're adding. Because right. when you yes. say that you're adding more washes, it, I'm assuming that means we're adding layers. Yes. So this is my base layer. And so are you keeping it particularly light, or is it just the nature of watercolor that it sort of is light in the first layer? Are you, I mean, you're using is, a brown, which I don't think of as a light color. Mm, it is going to be built up in layers. Okay. But this is the first wash. Okay. So I'm going to add shadows and like I will just go over here one more time and do the bird house and assuming our light is coming from here, I'm going to just add. Add a little bit of shadow. Now do you have to wait until the first layer is dry in order to add the shadow or can you go wet into wet? You can go wet into it, but if it is like too wet, then just wait a little bit or use a, a drying tool. But this is how you can build up, like there's the hole. I'm just gonna add, and you can use a smaller brush. I right. am so used to. But you're using the tip of the brush, which I think is a great tip that yeah. you can still, even though it's a big wide brush, there are a lot of different ways to use it. Yes. And the other thing is, of course, it, logically it makes sense to me, if there's a hole in a birdhouse, it's going to be dark in there, That's so that right. needs to be darker. Yes, and because it's behind the pot, this area is gonna be that bit darker too because anything, most things, is heavier at the bottom. The sh uh, so the shadow I will know be... I am. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> so. And so you're just gonna add that shadow, add a little bit of depth to it, and it's amazing how with just a couple strokes, it does actually start to look like there's depth. Yes. And I actually wanna share a tip that I saw you do, which is something that I do too, which is when you're working with tube col watercolors and you let them dry into a palette, you wanna make sure that before you start working with them, you activate, activate them, them, right? And yes. how do we activate something? Just add a little water. Just add a little water and those watercolors will get nice and juicy and those colors will come out. As opposed to if you try to use them just straight out of it, and I even do this with my pan watercolors, mm -hmm. where I will definitely take a spritz bottle, spray them with water so they're really activated. 
Fantastic. So as you keep going here and you're just playing around with remembering that that light source is coming from one side yes. and the way that we can tell the light source is coming from the left is if we look at the pot, the dark side is away from the light source. In case people that's are right. wondering how you're making decisions on where to put the darks, that's all it is, right? Yes. The, the side facing the light is lighter. The side facing away from the light is darker. So it's that simple. If you keep that in mind, you are good. It's the dark side of the moon theory, That's right? The it faces away. The there you go. So, and then anywhere, of course, that has an object in front of it, to add there that will be depth, a shadow. it will be darker too. Yeah. Very, very cool. How often are you adding water to your brush? Any tips on that? Mm, it, it's a good thing to remember that watercolors are going to dry lighter. Mm -hmm. So only practice will tell you how much water with okay. how much paint. There is really as many ways to do watercolor as there are artists. So now, you will have you to have, find your way. If you have any pools of water, do you ever take like a paper towel and blot them or do you always just let them dry? I just let them dry because it dries so organically. And when you look at it, it like, yes, that thing can have that shadow, that color of reflection on the back wall. Very cool. So any last watercolor tips you want to give? Uh, don't use white. Just if you want highlights, you leave that space blank. <laughs>